new plugin for Lightwave uh, called HDR Light Studio. It's been out there for a while for available as a standalone or with a couple of other apps, but now there's a plugin for Lightwave. So um, I want to demonstrate in, in its basics um, how it works. Okay, so I've got this very simple scene here with um, a box and a sphere. And um, the background is simply, I'll just um, open up the background options. Uh, the background is just an, is a composite image, okay? So it's just this graded uh, uh, gray color placed as a background image in there. The reason I've done that is because I'm using Shadow Catcher here. And um, when I use the Use Backdrop Color like that, um, for some reason, Shadow Catcher shows up so um, you have to use a background image so um, that's why I'm using this um, because I don't really want any environment in the scene I don't want any environment affecting the lighting because I just want to demonstrate the lighting purely through HDR Light Studio which is when it's installed um, you'll find the tab up here in Lightwave and if we look at that tab there You'll see down the side here it says HDR Light Studio and there's a couple of all of these controls uh, particular to HDR Light Studio. Right now let's uh, let's open it up. So I'm just going to click Enable and it should load up. Now keep in mind this is a beta version, so it might be uh, when it's released it might be a little different, but. Um, and I'm just going to make sure that this is yeah, always on top so that I can sort of um, keep it there while I work. Okay, so immediately you might have noticed that as soon as I open it up, this lighting has changed a bit. Um, and that's because now the scene is being lit by this image here. And so consequently, the image itself is, you know, the reflected images in, the, in these objects is similar to that. Now, um, first thing I'm going to do is go into this one here, which says Open Background Reference, and that's this image here. I'm going to click on that, and I'm just and we have a few options. You can load in a HDR image here, if you already have one, say. Um, or you can have it as it already is, which is a gradient, which can be uh, played around with. So you can see here I'm lightening and darkening the gradient. Um, but I'm not going to have anything in the background, so I'm just going to have it transparent, okay? So I'm just going to close that so it's a totally empty background here. And um, and then I'm just going to plonk in a light. So up here you can see that there's these lights, and I'm just going to plonk in this one here. <clears throat> okay, so I've just plonked it in. And as you can see, as I move this around, the lighting changes here in the scene. So this is effectively a HDR image map. Okay, and the, um, if we look down here in uh, background options, oh there it is. Okay, it's, it's hiding there behind um, behind the UI for HDR Light Studio. So anyway, um, you'll see here um, there's actually this HD, HDR Light Studio environment. Okay, so I turn that on and off. We're back to how we were originally, and what what's effectively going on. This is similar to, you know, where you have your textured environment, and you, you know, you put in a texture in here. Well, I'll just turn that off now. Um, <coughs> HDR Light Studio provides its own one, and um, you can either disable it or have it on. Um, when you're using HDR Light Studio, you'd obviously have it on, and uh, inside of that, you can't open it up. Okay, it doesn't open up. But just know that inside of that is is this image. Okay. Now I'll just um, put that back to always on top. Okay. So yeah, as you can see, when you move this around, um, the lighting is changing from underneath, from above. Okay. Um, and I'll get into all this stuff later. I just want to talk about light placement. Okay, so um, if we look down here on the left uh, where it says uh, light paint, and this is a feature of um, HDR Light Studio that is, is a big, uh, you know, the big seller. 
Um, it's a new thing that they've introduced. It's called Light Paint, and what it allows you to do is um, when you enable it, I, I'll change the mode to, yeah, to reflection. It means that wherever I touch on the image here, you'll see that you know, it places a uh, light reflection there, and this, is, this has changed its position up here in the interface. So what's going on is wherever I click here, um, it's calculating where to place the light so that a reflection will appear in that area of um, whatever it is you're clicking on. Where, I mean, you could have just come in here and, and played around to try to get it, you know, and that's an e easy way to work anyway, but this just makes it even better or more intuitive and interactive. Um, now, in here, in the uh, light paint, you've got a couple of different modes, and that's why I've set up this very simple scene is because I just want to show that off. Um, so currently it's reflection, so we're placing re light reflections. There's also rim lighting. Uh, if I turn on this one, this is going to attempt to place the light always somewhere in the background. You know, So if I want a, a bit of rim lighting, say on this area of the sphere here, I would click over here, and you'll see that, uh, you'll see that's shifted a little bit. And uh, let's just say I'll do this side, okay. All I'm doing is clicking anywhere on the image. You'll see that it's not placing reflections on on the face of these objects. It's putting lo the lighting behind. Okay. It's perhaps not showing up as much as it should. If I was to say increase the size of this light a lot, then we're going to see it more. So you can really see the rim lighting there now. Okay. And I just uh, changed the size of the light by playing with these sliders here, okay? You can see you can really, um, really exaggerate them and so on. Okay. Now, um, and the other option in there, in the light paint, was uh, illumination. So if I click on this one, what this is going to attempt to do is if I want to, say, illuminate um, the front face of this box here, click on that and it's going to put the light where it thinks it needs to be to illuminate, not to place a reflection. This is different to placing a reflection. Um, this is placing illumination. In fact, let's um, just to really illustrate this, I'm going to delete that light and just duplicate this light here, the same one that I used before. So to duplicate lights, you just come up to this icon here and click on it and we now have two, two lights exactly the same they're sitting exactly in the same place so you can't really see it in here uh, but you'll notice the lighting has uh, become a lot brighter here now um, if, if I'm in uh, reflection mode and I wanted to put a reflection on the front face of the box here and I click there you'll see that it the light has actually um, it hasn't uh, it's sitting in a slightly different position to where it was when it was just to illuminate so illumination and reflection are slightly different. Um, I'll put a reflection here, okay? You see the um, light has popped up over there. Maybe I'll also uh, just make these lights smaller so that we can really see that, you know, so it's a little less confusing. So there it is, that light's up there. So I click there to put a light reflection here. But I'm going to do the same thing now with this light which I'm also going to um, bring down in size. Um, so I'm going to go to light paint mode and change it to illumination and click in generally the same area to illuminate that side, right? And you'll see that the, ref the uh, illumination light has not jumped up to that same position. It's a slightly different position. So illumination and reflection are different light positions, okay? This was just to show you these different uh, lighting modes here, which can be a little confusing. The, the, one, the main one for me that was confusing was illumination. I didn't quite understand what that was about until I did this test uh, to see how that worked. Um, also, these two um, surfaces here, I'll just go to the surface panel. Um, both of these are using nodes and they're reflective, so I'm just going to turn turn them off so we're now back to our normal specular 
simple, simple specular surfaces with no reflectivity or anything. It's just got a bit of specular on it. So um, I'm in what mode am I in? I'm in uh, I'm in reflective mode here, and I just start uh, clicking around here, and it, you can see it actually you know has an effect even though these objects aren't um, reflective. It's certainly having an illumination or lighting effect. Not really a reflective. Um, it can't be reflective because it's not reflecting. So it's just really uh, affecting the lighting, and we're getting um, light fill in over here. Um, and if I go to say um, rim mode and try to move this around, you know it's working, but you won't see it because you're not going to see rim lighting on a specular object. It's just not going to. It just doesn't work that way. Um, and um, go to illumination, and this works quite well. You know, it's definitely illuminating that area that's in shadow. Definitely, like I can even click down here, and it's going to illuminate the floor, even though there's just shadow catcher. Um, so that, and you know, from above, so it's illuminating from above, or illuminate this face here. So that works quite well, even though these objects are just purely specular. So um, just keep in mind, but that. Um, to get the real benefit out of the HDR image map is um, you're going to want to have some reflective surfaces on your objects because otherwise what's the point, you know? So I'll just go back to uh, Surface Editor and turn these uh, back on. Um, the next step is I want to actually cr you know, do something a little more interesting. So I'm going to bring in an object and, um, and we're going to we're going to attempt to quickly light it up 